Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another Swiss 001 video. Now, guess what kind of plane we are in right now? Of course, as you can kind of already tell by the cockpit, we're right now flying a Concorde plane. Yeah, very nice one. And we're actually right now on final approach to an airport here. This is Palma de Mallorca Airport, a very interesting island airport with two very long runways, as you can tell, right in front of us. Now, landing the Concorde is interesting business itself. Uh, we're going to be a little faster because this plane doesn't have any laps. So, uh, at least 160 knots is needed, which is quite a bit faster than most other airliner, really. And let's use most of this runway possible, because this plane, it does need a little bit of that. <laughs> All right, come on, let's go and touch down. All right, not a very smooth landing, but whatever. We have to stop. There we go. The reverse thrust comes on, and that was actually a landing. And, oh, wow, I'm actually quite surprised. That was a pretty quick stop as well. All right, let's check this out from the outside view now, which is probably going to be a little bit more interesting. We can even go for slow motion. And as you can tell here on this landing, I almost hit the tail, which is no problem. That's usual business. Because as you can tell right here, there's this little tail wheel attached to the tail of the aircraft, obviously. Which uh, does come in handy sometimes, especially here now with this landing as well. There we go. We touch down on the tail wheel, which obviously protects the tail from impacting the ground, which perfectly works. That was a totally fine landing with the Concorde. Not good, particularly. Maybe actually we were a little slow low here. Again, at least you're going to want to need 160 knots, which is quite a bit compared to a normal airliner, which can totally land at 130 knots, depending on the size and the weight, obviously. No, but no, this plane has to be quite a bit faster on the landing and on the takeoff as well. It needs at least 220 knots for takeoff. So that really got me wondering today, well, what kind of airport and what kind of runway can this plane actually operate from and to? Because that is actually a really, really interesting question. As we can see, this runway totally worked out. We didn't even use like half of this 3,000 meter long runway. Yeah, barely 3,000 meters, which is like, you know, 10,000 feet or something. That is no problem. Actually, you could legally fly this plane here totally if it, if it was still to fly. Because this plane it needs a runway of 2,770 meters on paper, which is totally given here. Um, but uh, as we can tell, this plane doesn't need that long of a runway and to be quite Quite realistic. So let's try flying this plane to some shorter runways. Where could we go? All right, let's go actually on to a little bit of an exploration tour. Let's go to Aspen Airport, 2,400 meters of a runway, which is legally already a little tricky there. But uh, you know, the numbers mostly don't mean anything, of course. All right, now welcome to Colorado. Unfortunately, I have no scenery installed, but that doesn't matter. What does matter is the landing that we're about to do. All right, I'm gonna really try to concentrate to get this plane down. Actually, Actually, I'm, I'm not that worried about this landing. All right, everything is ready. The landing gear is down. Everything is looking good. Let's go ahead and get this plane touched down. All right, there we go. That was a landing. Let's go ahead and get this plane stopped. This runway is a little shorter and also quite a bit more narrow. That was uh, really not an easy landing. It is quite strange landing a plane at 170 knots, you know? It is quite a bit faster than you would land any plane. But let's just check out this landing here again in slow motion. This time I didn't do that much of a flare. I kind of tried using most of this runway possible, which turned out in a little bit of a bad landing. But as we could see, we totally stopped stop just fine. There we go. We even have uh, quite a bit of that runway left. No problem at all. So we can uh, go check out another place with an even shorter runway, of course, I guess. All right, let's maybe go for some bigger steps. Let's go to the infamous airport of Le Mole. Yes, we always like to visit this place. 1,200 meter long runway. Very, very much short. Uh, this is going to be interesting, but you know, we don't want to waste our time with long runways, right? All right, now welcome to the south of France. Yes, Le Mole finally again. There we go. As we can tell, Oh, this is a little bit of a shorter runway now. This is actually starting to get interesting. All right, let's go ahead. All right, full power takeoff. Let's get the snoop drooped up. You know the droop snoop. The droop snoop. Droop snoop? Yeah, the snoop would droop. The snoop droop whatever. It's interesting how quiet the plane in the cabin actually is, obviously. All right, now for this takeoff, I have the afterburners turned on. Everything is at 100% that this plane could ever be able to give. So let's just see if we can do this. Parking brake is turned off and we are rolling and we are rolling indeed. You know, I just want to check if a takeoff works before we do a landing on this kind of short runway. Again, we're going to need like 200 knots for proper flight, which is easily reached. There we go. 150 knots, 160, 170, 
right? No problem at all. I'm actually quite surprised by the, um, you know, runway performance of the Concorde. That is really not looking bad, is it? All right, let's check out this takeoff a little bit here in the replay mode. And this is actually incredibly loud right now. <laughs> All right, come on. And we go a takeoff in three, two, one. There we go. A little bit of a tail strike there. I could have gone a little easier there, but no worries at all, actually. This 1,200 meter long runway works perfectly fine. That is good. All right, let's maybe try landing this plane here then, which is uh, gonna be interesting. All right, now on approach here with this Concorde. Everything's ready. The droop snoot is out. The snoot would droop. The snoot droop. Let's go ahead and get the landing gear down as well. And we are flying at 200 knots. Probably the fastest aircraft ever to approach this airport here. But we're uh, totally ready. Let's go ahead. All right, this is going to be spicy. I can already see that. Hard landing coming in. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and get this plane stopped as quickly as possible. And actually, that was a very, very quick stop. Especially for landings. This plane does need a long one. So let's uh, try a smaller place then. Jesus. Oh, yeah, that landing kind of did destroy the plane though. Okay. Okay, whatever. All right, then the next step would be this interesting island airport that we've got right ahead. As you can see, these runways are getting shorter and shorter. This one now is a thousand meters long, barely. Yeah, this is actually a German island that I flew to quite a while ago, actually in real life as well. And now we're actually starting to get very, very close to the end of the runway. You know, at the thousand meters. Let's just see what we can do. All right, come on, let's go ahead and stop. All right, come on. And we're actually looking very good on this stop. This is actually kind of ridiculous. How is this plane so able to land on these short runways there? I mean, okay, I do have to say I did touch down a little bit uh, before that runway started on the grass field, man. But that's no problem. As you can see, this is some very solid landing gear tires. Actually, this really shouldn't be that much of an issue. But, but either way, we didn't even use like half of this runway. It's pretty ridiculous. We can try in a shorter runway then. All right, here's a neighboring island which has a 700 meter long runway. All right, another interesting German island called Juist, by the way. And we have this little concrete runway right ahead. Let's go ahead and get this plane landed down there. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, wow, this is close. Oh, yeah, okay. Actually, we are starting to get to the definite limits of this plane now with this kind of runway. Oh, yeah, that that really did not work. No, no chance. Oh, so yeah, it turns out that the absolute limit of this plane is around a thousand meters of runway, which is around 3,000 feet. That is really the most that this plane can do, which is pretty impressive, definitely, still. Let's go ahead and touch down. Put me to a proper landing now. All right, a little bit of a harder one, but at least we didn't touch down in grass. That's good. And perfect. That was a perfect landing indeed. Wow. And we have a little bit of the runway left. Uh, so maybe 900 meters would do on the absolute maximum. <laughs> All right, let's check out this landing. All right, a little bit of a harder one. But, you know, again, we did stop and we did not touch down on grass either. So this was totally a fine landing there. So overall, we are very impressed by the performance of this aircraft when it comes to short runway. Uh, that really has not been uh, any issue this video. Video. 900 meters for such a plane is very interesting indeed. I mean, that's what a 737 can do. And we can already say the 737 is impressive as well. So really, really nice there, Concorde. And, uh, well, that, that didn't particularly work out. So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.